We are nearing the end of Computex 2018, which ended up being a much bigger new show than we expected. It's surprisingly good. It gives me a lot of excitement for the future of PCs. Uh, we kick things off with Aces, which usually starts the show. Yeah. First of all, with the ROG Republic of Gamers event, where they unveil the ROG phone as well as a couple of ROG Strix 2 laptops. The laptops are pretty straightforward laptops, but the phone oh, is boy. really cool. It's the most powerful smartphone, I think, on the market right now, or will be on the market. And it has all these cool little accessories that could actually make it more, much more useful than what we saw from Razer's gaming phone. Aces yeah. also had a lot of things to share at its official event for the mainstream branded stuff with a Zemba Pro 15 that has a touchpad that houses a touchscreen so you can use it for other stuff as right. well like launching quick apps like a calculator or a calendar but also as a second screen to put your Excel spreadsheets on that 5.5 inch display or a YouTube video or, or a YouTube video or a messaging yeah. app. It's cool, it feels really good. It's clearly Asus's response to Apple's Touch Bar. Yeah, we still don't know how durable it'll be or even how useful it'll be down the line, but it's a really cool idea for an Asus. There's also a bunch of other laptops that Asus showed off, the ZenBook S, which is a thin and light rugged device, as well as Vivo Books, which are mainstream and got a color upgrade, uh, as well as one more thing, it's a press from Asus. <laughs> It was something called Project Precog that Asus worked with Intel on. It's a full dual screen laptop. We've seen this sort of attempted before, but the Precog device looks super sexy because of its all glass body. Did mm -hmm. you like it, Devendra? It looks really cool. Uh, they just had like several of them on display. We couldn't touch them, we couldn't use them, but they seem to be working, which yeah. is kind of interesting for a you know, pre-production device. And yeah, the idea is that there are two displays. You could use it as like a e-reader on both sides. Uh, you could turn one into a keyboard, but the really cool thing, uh, Asus had it up in portrait mode with two screens standing and a separate wireless keyboard in front of it, which shows us like, oh, that is, maybe this could be the future of all-in-one PCs or something like that. Asus says the Project Precog will be on sale in 2019, uh, and it also took the Project Precog device over to Intel's keynote later in the day, where the chipmaker also showed off a few other dual screen devices, including Lenovo's second generation yoga book. That thing is now also in the wild, and instead of having a touch sensitive panel in place of a keyboard on one side, it'll now be dual screens. We didn't get to play with this thing at all. It was only briefly flashed on stage by a Lenovo executive, but hopefully it'll be less of a disaster than the first generation <laughs> yoga book was. Having two displays is a really good step forward. And the really interesting thing is that Lenovo also gave us a quick peek at what could be coming next year in the third generation. And that seems like it could be a direct Project Precog competitor. Now, obviously, the main concern with running dual screen devices on these form factors is battery life. Intel had something cool to share, though. It's developing a new thing called low power display technology, which is supposed to add about four to eight hours of battery life to existing devices. So not only does it have benefits for dual screen PCs, but it could also mean longer lasting devices for a connected PC. And it wouldn't be an Intel keynote without some processor talk. They showed off the 8086K anniversary edition chip, its first to reach five gigahertz in turbo mode. And the really cool thing is that Intel gave us a demo of a 28 core chip that'll be coming later this year and could reach five gigahertz as well. Speaking of processors, Qualcomm is here and launched the Snapdragon 850 chipset designed specifically for PCs. It'll make better use of all that extra space in a larger form factor than a smartphone, and therefore because of the thermal benefits, it can now go up to 2.96 gigahertz in terms of its clock speed, meaning it'll run 30% faster. Its battery is supposed to last five hours longer than Snapdragon 835's PCs before too. So a lot of promise here for the connected PC platform. For sure, and Intel also announced that 5G PCs will be sold next year together with Sprint. And I think that's gonna be the big thing that always connected PCs really need to take off. And as usual for Computex, things got really geeky. NVIDIA was here and they announced a new platform for intelligent robots. Mm -hmm. uh, AMD was here and they made some big announcements. The next Threadripper CPU will have up to 32 cores. That's pretty crazy and really one-upped Intel just a day after their big announcement. So that was really funny to watch and maybe a little less important for consumers. AMD also showed off the first seven nanometer GPU, uh, but this is gonna be something mainly meant for machine learning. It's not gonna make it to consumer video cards anytime soon. So that's just a summary of all the biggest news out of Computex 2018, and I'm sensing a theme here, Devendra? Sure, it's really all about the future of computing. We're seeing new spins on the PC formula. I think that screen pad was a really interesting move by Asus. The computers themselves are just getting a lot more powerful and a lot slimmer. Uh, there are a ton of gaming PCs that are just doing really cool things and packing a lot of hardware. What's really fascinating is that this is all coming on the heels of Apple's WWDC event, where they didn't announce any hardware, and it seemed like there weren't really that many innovative announcements 
announcements. To me, it's really interesting that the PC world is kind of showing more innovation now. Lower power displays, faster processors, and even things like a dual screen setup. Longer lasting um, batteries, battery yeah. efficiency, uh, technology improvements. Yeah. There's a lot going on here where it seems like Apple's really ignoring desktop computing, and the PC world is kind of refocused on it. Not to forget, there's plenty of cool stuff here at the show floor in Taiwan as well, and we'll be bringing you all of that news. Stay tuned to Engadget for all of that news. Meanwhile, we're sad to be leaving Taipei, our stomachs especially, <laughs> but we will be back next year, so keep it locked on Engadget.com. <laughs>